Hey guys. All right, we're live. Cool. We're going to do first live stream ever. Let's see if somebody shows up. If not, anybody watching this in the future, what we're going to be doing is trying to do a little bit of remodeling of the Ultra Magnus screen, which is the Ultra Magnus is the rebuild for an ANET A plus. If you have one and want to upgrade it to a bear, basically. So let's get over to Fusion. Let's take a look at what we got. Right now we're doing a section cut here. Trying to kind of figure out how we want to lay this out. And I think what we want to do is change the uh, way this mounts, because right now it does not line up well with uh, the screw holes don't line up very well with the brackets and they're hard to get to so we need to move this bracket over this way a bit make the holes fit and then I think what I'm going to do is make the top cover a snap fit because uh, I really like how uh, I like how clean it is on the front. I don't want to put bolt holes in the front. I really like having it come in from the, the bolt holes come in from the back. So I think what we're going to do um, to get rid of the wheel, get rid of the cover for now. I think what we're going to do is give this a little bit more uh, thickness there. We're going to make the back plate just a little bit beefier. Um, and we're going to screw in from the top. Uh, so if we make this a little bit beefier, we can put some captive nuts back there to catch. Um, and then we can snap fit the cover on. Uh, the, co the cover doesn't really have any structure to it, so it should be fine. Uh, especially with the, you know, pushing on the wheel, the button there. Um, all that force is going to go to the back plate and the mounts. So I think we're going to do that. Um, so where to start is always the most difficult part. Let's, let's get rid of the cover again. Find that just to highlight it. If you're having trouble finding it in the in the tree there, which I do often do because I'm bad at naming stuff. You just highlight it something, it's gonna underline whatever you're working on. So let's uh, let's first start by getting this bracket moved over. I think this one's fine, I'm gonna leave it. I'm going to move this one over to make a little more clearance for these bolts. Uh, and I want to make a pass through from the front to access the bolts to screw it in. So this whole thing, we need just we need to make it assemble better. Right now it is really, really a pain in the butt to assemble. Um, Shane Fuga on Fugatech 3D is putting this together on one of his streams. Um, he talked about that, and it, he's definitely right. It makes it a pain in the butt to get it put together. So let's get rid of the screen. And let's hide some other stuff here. So that is in here. We'll hide that guy. Take these screws and hide them. Now we kind of got to figure out how we want to move this. And there are a few ways to do this. I like not rebuilding uh, parts that are already modeled. So I'm going to cut, slice, chunk up, and move. So let's start by making a sketch. We're going to use this sketch for a couple things. Rectangle. The size on this is fairly irrelevant, just needs to capture those holes. Now we're going to extrude everything to the back. And we are going to do a new body. It's a cool little trick for splitting bodies uh, with a very specific uh, geometry. So we're going to do that. Got our new body right there. Highlight. Me, yep, we're going to highlight this. Actually, let's highlight nothing. Split body. First body to split is that one. Second one, we're going to very specifically select that. And hit OK. 
So now we can hide this. Figure out, oh, we had the wrong thing highlighted. It. That is okay. We can take this. Oh no, that's right, I'm sorry. That body is split out of the panel, so we want it to stay under the case back. Perfect. So we're going to hide it. And then we're going to just do a quick little extrude here, extrude cut. Um, kind of move that over to, and this is not an exact science, because it doesn't really matter where it goes as long as it's out of the way. Um, that should give it plenty of room right there. We're going to hit OK. We're going to turn this back on. We are going to move this body. We're going to go point to point. We're going to say that point to that point. Okay. And then we're going to join these back together. So what we could do is actually do a combine uh, and then do the extrude to finish it up. Or quicker is just to do this extrude right here, right to this face. And when we say join, it's going to put all these back together into one body. Done. Um, so at that point, we can turn our other stuff back on. Get rid of that. We just don't need it anymore. We're going to do a remove there so it doesn't mess up any uh, geometry that's relying on it. And we are going to... So like that, that, and that. Is it going to let me? Okay, then we're going to move them. We could do a point-to-point uh, -point on that, except I happen to remember that we did 13 millimeters, so we're just going to slide that over. Like since I, I select, you can't really uh, move a body and components at the same time. They have to be done separately. Um, that's why it only slid those two. Um, I had forgotten about that. So back over 13 millimeters. It's a lazy way to do it, but it's an easy. But since it's just a simple move, it's okay. So now that gets that out of the way. Let's capture our position because I forgot to do that. All right. So that that sets us up to be able to. Um, Assemble this thing in a better way. Hey! Vikings on! Somebody's actually watching my stream! Hey, dude! You should watch my chat! <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm just uh, trying to remodel this for Shane so he can, you know, he's not, I don't think he's gonna get it up for him on his stream today, but both him and Brandon, uh, pointed out that this thing was a pain in the butt to install and in so we're making it better um, so at this point we need to do some extrusions here to get make access for those bolt holes and I am trying to remember how I did that the best way to do that is just do this let's do a sketch pull in some geometry pull in that that Extrude those. What did I select there? Cool. So in theory, that wasn't even close. Not even close. No, I haven't Viking. It's just the first, this is honestly the first stream I've ever done. I just kind of, I put it out there on uh, Shane's Discord. Uh, to see if anybody wanted to come watch. I wasn't really, it's a little bit of an experiment. Uh, just kind of wanted, it was a little, but I also, I wanted to kind of get this set up. I also wanted to see if I had my OBS stuff set up right. I know, how's, let me know how the audio is. Can you hear the little background music I got going? Stuff like that, does it seem good? So what I'm trying to do, though, is line that up with the front. Why did my 
sketch did not line up there the way I wanted it to. That's why. Still not really lining up. Huh. Cool. Thanks, man. Since you're the only one here on my very first stream ever, you're my guinea pig, dude. And I am running into something that I'm even having trouble with. I need to get that to line up down there. What is that? That I know why. Holy cow, Richard! Haven't seen you, heard from you for a while, buddy. How you doing, man? You're officially my second viewer ever on a live stream. <laughs> Not Volvo related though, dude. <laughs> I don't even have a Volvo anymore. Well, cool. Thanks, man. I've been trying to kind of put out little stuff there that, uh... oh yeah? What you driving nowadays, brother? So, if you're wondering what I'm doing right now, I'm trying to figure out the way a way to line up with this. Oh, I know. Well, let's see. How can we do this? Subaru. Well, we are in Oregon. You gotta own a Subaru. I mean, I, I don't personally want one. <laughs> I switched over to the dark side. I have a BMW now. This is the way to do this. I'm having a serious brain fart here. Why is this not lining up the way I want it to? Right, let's try this again. With that. The other way to do it would just be do a that extra big hole to make sure you have space. Let's try that again. So what I want to do is line up this geometry right here. Why is that not happening? Let's look at that. But I probably oh, let's see. What is the way to do this? So the problem I'm having, and I'm having just a serious brain fart, is how do I make this hole that I want to drill through here line up? Dude, if you want to work on some uh, interior parts, we can print out lots of stuff. I just got the big boy, where is it, over here, put together. That's a 300 by 300 by 320 printer. Um, that's a really good question, Richard. Um, I, I I bought it um, because they, you know, obviously you're. I'm assuming you're asking because they made a bunch of changes recently. It's it's still free, um, and as long as you're okay with only having ten active models, just do the free stuff. Um, I've got just so many active models. Um, but that was just going to be a pain in the ass. So I, I bought it. Uh, the initial buy price was a good price. Uh, it was like, it was a couple hundred bucks off. So I just went with that. Um, I use it all the time. I'm trying to kind of justify finding ways to actually make some of that money back. You know, maybe, you know, trying to actually, so I'm, I used to just do all my models for free. Um, now that I'm paying for Fusion, I'm not. I'm trying to sell a couple of them. I wish I could say I'd sold any of them yet, but I haven't. Um, but I'm also kind of trying to start to put myself out there 
uh, with a couple of little local like uh, machine shops. They do. There's a couple of precision custom machining shops that I know some guys that run, and I was seeing if I could maybe get some prototyping stuff going for them. Um, things like that. But we shall see. Is this not connected? It's interesting. Why is this not actually a circle? It's very strange. Let's see if we can make it a circle. But yeah, dude, if you want to think about uh, putting together some uh, interior parts, we should. Oh, Blender. Blender is... Blender's not for me. I suck at organic shapes. Um, I'd rather do mechanical stuff like this. Um, even in Fusion, I just, I'm garbage with the mechanical shapes uh, because I haven't really taken the time to mess with it. Um, I haven't really had a need to. I haven't really had a want to. Um, why is this not letting this... This is really weird. Let me just get rid of this geometry. This is not letting me actually create what I want here. Maybe that's why. Get out of this. I think this model needs to be cleaned up. Where's that line? There's some garbage geometry in here that's giving us grief. Is that? All right. This one's starting to piss me off. This should be way easier than this. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a super powerful software, uh, Blender is, but you're right, it's definitely more for uh, animation, but I've seen some guys, I mean, make some incredible models using it. Um, I feel like I'm really fumbling around right here trying to get this to go the way I want it to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Viking. I just noticed your comment about Fusion. I think Fusion is, uh, from that respect, easier to pick up. Um, I haven't tried ZBrush at all. Um, I'm just, I don't have a whole lot of interest in doing that type of modeling. The, you know, like stuff like uh, Photos Mint and uh, Wexter, they do those just awesome models that for, you know, everybody's got a Photos Mint or a Wexter model of themselves, apparently. Um, if you have more than, you know, a couple YouTube subscribers like I do. Um, yeah. But I, again, don't really have much interest in doing that. At least not yet. And I don't really have the time. I barely have time to do this. Like, I'd love to grow the channel more and do more stuff. But, you know, with two little kids that are absolute monsters, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt. All right. I am still struggling to figure out the best way to do this. So I think I'm just going to kind of wing it here. Let's go back in. That sketch I was I've started to create three times now. No, I don't. What did I move? Oh. I wanted that. Uh, do revert. We actually do want to capture that position. Alright, let's try this for the third, fourth, fifth time now. Um let's try pulling just a tiny little bit of this geometry through. Maybe just use the bottom curve. No, I take that back. I want to do... Ah. I want to do... That's why I'm, I need to be picking this circle here. It's pulling this geometry. Let's do that. That. Let's see where that gets us. Look at, look at, look at. Gets us back where we want to go. Okay, so this is looking a little better. So I think what I'm going to do is just a couple pass through circles here. How to do it. And we're going to just do this the easy way. Let's try and. 
I think I can tangent those. Tangent that, and it's not gonna let me do that. Shoot. Boy. This was a tough one for even me. What am I trying to do here? Let's, if I get... Yes, absolutely, Viking. Those guys are so far beyond what I would ever hope to be able to achieve in like skill level and creativity. They're they're fantastic. This. So what I'm trying to do here is get a uh, use this curve. I don't want to just eyeball this. But there's no geometry on this that I can actually grab. So we might just be eyeballing this. Oh, I know what I can do. I can... Let's pull in... Actually, yeah, yeah, here we go, here we go. Let's make... No, use the right constraint here. We're going to use a horizontal constraint. Yeah, my... Uh, I'm using my uh, undo key way too much here. All right, we want that. We're gonna do a horizontal constraint from this to the center of this circle. That gets us the height. In theory, that gets us the height. Did I pick the wrong circle? All of a sudden, it's not lining up there. Now, I'm probably way overthinking this because I want this to line up with the holes in the back. Here. We should pull that in. Pull that in. That's what I want to line up my center point with. Let's do this to this. And then this right down at the bottom we're gonna eyeball it but we're gonna constrain it with some dimensions it says it wants to seven sure uh, what's up ryan the official third person never watched me stream i'm just gonna close it Yeah, I, I hear you, Viking. Um, time is just... I mean, it took me... The amount of time I put in just to get what I would consider to be profession, pro proficient with 360 was a lot. Um, it was, it's not a just a thing you just pick up. I mean, I mean, I guess it kind of is. You, you, you don't just pick it up. Like, there's a steep learning curve. Um, this is weird. Why am I not getting a center point to pull in there? Over here, I got a center point when I pulled that in. Is it gonna give that to me? It did, okay. Um, yeah, it's it's how much time you wanna spend on something and you know, picking the product, in my opinion, that, uh, that fits what you wanna do. Like, you wanna make cool models like Wexter does and, um, you know, model goofy figures of uh chris Warkaki and uh he's done a bunch uh uh joel and all that i mean they're awesome I, that's not a, that's not a dig on him i mean it's just not where my interest is and i'm pretty sure i would suck at it so let's constrain this guy to this and this guy to this and holy cow after all that time, I think I finally got something where I want it. Um, let's extrude these two guys to here, cut them out, and in the oh, finally. So the theory here is that probably should have done a little bit of an angle. I'll, I'll put a little bevel on the back, but the theory is I want to be able to get you want to be able to get a screwdriver through this to catch the nut, the bolt that goes out here. Um, all that work for those two holes. Um, Gosh, I really feel like there's a better way to have done that. But that's what we're going to do. 
That is what we're going to do for now. And then we're going to move on and work on something else. <laughs> Llama has, well, Llama makes fun of everyone. <laughs> it's kind of his job. Let's see here. Okay, so let's move on to stuff that actually is more important here. Let's get rid of these guys. Let's get rid of the screws for now. Because we're going to change all that. Also want to get rid of these chamfers because we want to... Do we? Yeah, we do. Let's keep it. Oh, we're going to have to do a whole bunch of selects here. Delete, delete, control, control, click, click, click. Remember there's a curve on a chamfer. You gotta highlight them all. So it yells at you when you hit delete. There we go. Do that. Let's see if we can get away with leaving that one. Oh, he made your helmet? And a mini Viking? Awesome. See? That's what happens when more than three people in the 3D printing world know who you are. That's cool, man. Oh, speaking of Viking stuff, I finally trimmed back the, the Viking haircut down to a manageable mohawk. It was it was light. <clears throat> I, I, I took, I think, four or five inches off it. go here and get rid of this stuff get rid of all these white oh whoops and get rid of that too so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a space for a captive nut on the back of this okay and I think that means we're gonna need to give it a little bit more depth so I'm gonna ex let's see Let's get rid of these chamfers. Chamfer all the things, you dang right, Ryan. Always chamfers. If it doesn't have a chamfer on it, you know it wasn't made by me. Let's, let's give ourselves, we don't need a whole lot more just another millimeter on that. Because that gives that four millimeters of depth. Most uh, M3 nuts are, I think these are M3s, aren't they? Yeah, M3. I think they're only like three millimeters deep, so that'll give us a little extra meat in there. The tops are gonna stay the same. Now I need to remind myself, a good dimension for three millimeter nuts, because I never remember. No more Uncle Jesse. <laughs> Uh, was that you that thought I was Uncle Jesse that first time I went on somebody's stream? I can't remember who that was. <laughs> Transformer name. Yeah, uh, it's, it's always got to be a Transformer name. I mean, that's just that's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. Yeah, I know uh, that one would have been pretty cool. The, the Voron would have been cool as uh, Optimus, but I wanted it to be orange and black and... Credit King was just way too cool of a logo, too. Yeah, who? I don't even remember who that was. I think I I jumped on either Warcocky. Oh, okay. Okay. That makes sense. I don't, since I haven't really had a whole lot of interaction with him, that makes sense. All right. Does anybody know when Shane was going to stream this afternoon? I don't want to, I want to cut this before I go to, before his Shane, before his stream starts. All right, back on track. What am I doing here? My first stream, I'm trying to figure out how to read comments and do stuff at the same time. Just, let's see here. All right, so I need to figure out how big to make a captive nut. And whenever I do that, I always just jump over to something else I've been working on and look at measurements. Oh, fusion, gotta think about, gotta think about that. Let's see, does this have any in there? I don't think this does. So for the folks that don't know, which I think is probably just Richard, this is what uh, this this is the 
printer that this screen sits on the front of. Uh, this is an A8, an Anet A8 Plus, uh, completely revamped to be basically be a big old bear printer. Um, so the Greg Sonier's uh, XX or extruder goes on this. Um, we just remodeled it to make it look way cooler too. Um, but I am looking for a captive nut because I never remember what size to make them. I don't actually don't think there are any on this. Uh, what's this? One? Oh, perfect. Here we go. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Nope, haven't put them in that one yet. That's from another printer. That is from this printer. Screw shame. <laughs> Let's see, one of these has got to have... There we go, that is the dimension I'm looking for right there. Right there. What are you... Measure from there to... There... 5.456. Sure, that's what we're going to go with. Because I'm pretty sure that's a dimension uh, Mr. Greg Sonier himself came up with, and I am not going to argue with anything he came up with, because he typically knows what the actual is going on. Alright, let's do that, Hold it there, this one I just copied, divided by two, because we're using radius, then we're going to make this parallel to this. And then we're going to do a few more of those. So let's make it so we can see that. Right click and say, no, I can't do that yet because I did a different. We're going to right click and say repeat, but the last thing I did was a dimension or a constraint. So now I can go here and just do that. And mention this to this. No, can't. Actually, yeah, we can. Yeah. Let's be too cute. Let's do this the easy way. Dimension from here to here. And just click on that so it uses the same dimension. Parallel this to this. Get a couple more of those. There are probably more elegant ways to do this, but when you're only doing four, who cares? Ryan, yeah, I think it would be easier to use heat sets. Um, I used to not really like them. Um, oh, he's gonna be like 20 minutes, cool. Um, I used to not really like heat sets, maybe because I had crappy ones the first set I bought. Um, and I just kind of always got used to doing uh, captive nuts. Um, now that I built the Voron, I definitely have gotten really damn good. Hey, Mr. Sellers. Um, I've gotten better with the heat set inserts. I I still don't love them though. You know, as long as you're uh, pulling, like on these it would be fine, I think, because the stress, the nut, it's getting pulled, uh, how do I say it? Um, the uh, the stress is not pulling it out of the hole. So the, the screw, since the screw's gonna be coming in from the top, if you were to put a heat set insert from the back, that stress is going to be going this way towards the screw, which is fine because there's going to be a lot of mass between it. What I don't like, and there's quite a few of these on like the extruder for the Voron, is where that stress is pulling the uh, heat set insert out of the hole you've put it in. And most of the time it works, but I, I don't know, I just don't find it ideal. And M3 nuts are easy and a lot cheaper than heat set inserts, and these just pop right in. But either way would work for sure. Let's dimension. Grab that. Nyam, what's up, brother? 
right, so then we're going to extrude these down. Let's go negative three, cut those in. So that is how we're gonna do this. And then, instead, chamfer all the things. Chamfer all the things, always. Definitely cham for all the things. Don't care about actually yeah we do care about that. Run for life. Dude, I, I, I love it. I absolutely love that machine, but it is a, a core XY is new to me. Uh the one I tore apart to use the parts to make that Voron. Uh, was just as big. I mean, a lot. Most of the parts are from that old guy. I never really got it working. Um, let's do point four on that. Yeah, it looks good. Um, so I'm still working at getting it dialed in. Um, so when do we do get it? Aaron only. Aaron only. Oh come on! No, 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 no. Maybe. Well, maybe. You know, if you want it. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you, Richard's right. Yeah, this is it. I've, there's like six people in the world that like me anyway. Uh, hell, I've even pissed off people in the Discord world. Not gonna... Well, some people may know who I'm talking about. So, let's see. How do I want to do this? Definitely want to put a bit of a chamfer on this, just so it doesn't... Give some room for the uh, screwdriver going through it. I uh, also don't want to run into that hole there. Actually, it doesn't. Let's do two distance. It's interesting. This new dialog box for uh, the chamfer tool is threw me off a couple days ago. It's relatively new, and it gives you a whole bunch more options that I haven't even figured out yet. Uh, maybe we'll do a stream sometime on just figuring that tool out, because um, I do love me my chamfers. And if there's more options for chamfers, I want to. I want to. Be, I want to be part of that. Take that hoodie off. Take the hoodie off. <laughs> yeah, I got three core XY. I still need to build one of them. Still need to build. Oh, you built one. Yeah. I, I just. I'm having trouble. I'm all over the place today. My brain's ADD. Um, yeah, I, I've gotten that thing pretty. Like I can. I can do decent prints out of it. Um, if I go slow. But the whole point of the Voron is to be able to print stupid fast. And as soon as I start printing fast on that thing, stuff just goes to garbage. So, hey, Brandon, what's up, buddy? So yeah, as, as soon as I start printing really fast on that thing, it, the prints go to garbage. I'm running a 0.6 nozzle on it, which, so a couple firsts for me. Uh, first time, like, really trying to get a Core XY dialed in. Uh, so that's new to me a little bit. Uh, I've never used a 0.6, anything other than a 0.4 nozzle. And then on top of that, I put on one of the mosquito knock, uh, hot ends from Mellow. So it's that NF or NX crazy nozzle. And I got the Magnum version of it because I knew I wanted to be pumping some plastic through it really fast. And it, I don't know, I, I haven't got the ooze figured out on it. Uh, it strings a bit. String is gonna. I think string is gonna happen with that big of a nozzle, regardless. So just a whole bunch of different little factors. I threw it myself all at once, and I'm trying to kind of figure it all out. 14 minute benchy. I I did print off a benchy on that really fast, and it was wasn't. It would definitely wasn't as good as Nero's. Um, but I think I did a benchy on it. I think I did a 25 minute benchy. Um, I don't think I have it sitting around here. Um. But I did a 20, I can't remember. I know I did a super fast bench, and I think I did 150% benchy in less than an hour. I'll have to do it again, it's been a while. But I did pull off a super fast benchy on that. 200, yeah, see, I think, Ryan, I would rather do a small 2.4 or even another smaller 1.8 than like a Voron Zero. I don't know. I, I'm kind of, I don't know. I, I'm, I think I'm overly critical of the Voron Zero because it's so expensive for 
such a tiny little stupid space on it. Like, I don't want to spend, I mean, they're like, it's like 700 bucks to build one of those for nothing. And the cheap grapple printer, the cheap printer I made, I don't think that's going to print that much worse than a Voron Zero, because you don't need that much, you don't need that much speed and precision on something that small. Because you're not moving fast enough and far enough to really gain the benefits of an awesome Core XY uh, kinematic. See, now 600 by 600 by 600, that's where it's at. And you put like a 8.8 .8 or a 1 millimeter nozzle on it or something and just print huge stuff super fast. Ryan, it is cute. It's cute. But again, I'm, I'm, I'm so cheap. You guys know that. Shane and I have competitions on who can be the cheapest, I think. Um, all right, let's uh, let's put the case back on this to kind of figure out how we want to chamfer this to make it look better. Okay, this. First of all, we just can delete that face so it lines up. Then... got to spend a little time making it look good. Yeah, exactly, Jim. And, and I think, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd love to have a V0 sitting right here on my desk. Uh, that that would be awesome. Um, I just, I don't want it so much to spend money on it. Distance, I think it should just be one. I think that'll look okay. Poking out the back a little bit, but nice little chamfer on there to make it look nice. And then I guess I could probably do that same chamfer on this. Just do one. Yeah. I like it. I'll take it. It's cute. <laughs> Not as cute as Viking. You people are as cute as Viking. Yeah, that's the thing. You, I I will admit, I, I, I wish I could run 2.8 or 2.85 millimeter filament on something, and I should just set it up because it's so cheap. And uh, Jim and I are the uh, rare guys that actually like our ABS. Because um, you can buy a kilogram roll of 2.8 ABS for like 10 bucks, 10, 12 bucks all day long, because nobody buys it, so it sells for cheap. All right. So that's how I want this to look, which I'm kind of liking. Now let's figure out how to put the bolts on the inside. So we've got our sp spaces for the nuts there. Let's take the cover back off, grab, where are the screws I'm looking for? Top ones? Well, that one. So, we're going to move this guy. Spin it around. Pull it out so I can grab some geometry here. Grab this. And go point to point on that. That is where I want that to sit capture position. So we got to figure out how much clearance we got to give inside the other piece now. So yeah, exactly. I want to love my corks Y. So V zero is when I Y M I R micro Viking. Sorry, dude. I'm not sure what that is. The 10 Yeah. Yeah, I mean, anything for like speakers, car, automotive. I think you do, a, Jim, you do a lot of uh, stuff for like golf carts. Super cool. People's golf carts are insane when they own them, how they just completely pimp them out. It's ridiculous and I love it. Um, but yeah, doing, you got to do the ABS for that type of stuff. Um, <laughs> All right, let's turn that cover back on. What we're going to do here is a section analysis to see how much we need to clearance this. So right there. Hmm. 
Hmm. That's going to be a pain in the butt. We need to make room for this nut without putting a hole in the top of this. So we're going to need to cut this out like that and make it parallel. How are we going to do that? Well, let's first just cut it out and maybe just maybe what I think what I may do here is just um, just extrude this back, even if it makes a hole and then come in and repair the hole with another extrude or something. So let's, let's hit OK to this. Extrude this up. Yeah, we're totally going to be cutting that out of there. You only want to cut that. We'll leave the nuts. So two and a half. We're going to leave ourselves some clearance in there, else this is just going to end up in disaster, I think. Oh, right, okay. North mythology, gotcha. I'm going to do the same over here. Get in there. This. Nope, it's not going to let me. Alright, so we went 2.5 on that. Is it going to let me grab anything else to cut at the same time? No, it's not. Well, I'm not sure why that is, but we can do multiple extrudes here. Let's do that. Come on. Come down here. This one will be easier because it's not going to cut it out any garbage. 5. Negative 2.5. Well, that one good. The world was... Cr oh, okay. Make, uh, Viking, that, uh, that sounds familiar. I'm not super good on my Norse, Norse mythology. Ryan, that is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it snap on. It's going to be friction fit. Because I do not want to put bolt holes in the front of this. I like how clean it is. Um, so what I'm doing, I probably catch a couple of you guys up on this that missed the beginning. Um, the screws used to come in. So I obviously I flipped this screw around. Um, used to come in from the back uh, gra and grab the top of the case and then pinch the uh, screen in between them. Now what I'm going to do... Oh... And I just realized that I have to plan ahead better here. I didn't. Uh, I didn't extrude that enough. Let's back this up. Because um, anyway, so I'm going to uh, use. I'll show you instead of talking like a moron. I will just show you. I'm going to bolt this in from the top. Where's my screen? Screen. Okay. So this is going to get bolted in from the top, and then I'm just going to do some uh, little divots on the side or the top so I can friction fit, snap on the, uh, the top of the screen. But I need to remember to, when I cut the clearance for these bolt hole, for these bolt heads, I should change that over to cap screws because they're thinner. Let's do that. Let's insert. Come on, insert. Like master car. We are gonna find an M3. M3. Three screws, sure. Yep. Metric, please. How long? Doesn't really matter. Let's say 12s. Rounded. I did something wrong there. There we go. That's what we want. One of those. Buttonhead. Oh, thank you, Buttonhead. That's totally what I meant. You're right, Ryan. Um, CAD, CAD, there we go, okay, um, step file, save, and we wait, 
Mythic Mug. Not the one I finished. All right, so we are going to rotate this to get it kind of close. And we are going to go point to point. Actually, no, we're not. We are going to use the align tool first. We're going to align that face. Actually, let's we'll align the whole thing. We'll align that with that. And then we're going to capture that position. So, oh yeah, that's way better. Let's get rid of that guy. We don't care about him anymore. Um, in fact, how much clearance do we need for that? Let's measure. There to there is... Nice, less than two millimeters. Actually, that might mean what I did before will be fine. Either way, we shall do it again to make sure we do it right. <laughs> the thing's always on. It's, yeah, the screen on that stupid treadmill is always on. You have to go, like, you can stop it, but you have to, like, reach around, like, behind it to actually uh, turn the full, the power off to the thing. Yeah, the giant belt printer. I will never do a belt printer. I just, I have no need for that. They look like too much of a pain in the ass. Yeah, not just, I just don't see it ever happening. Do not want, right. Since you guys are here, you might as well try to like my stream. But I gotta be a typical YouTuber and ask for likes and subscribe and all that BS. But you know, I guess it'd probably help out the algorithm a little bit. Let's extrude this. Oh, okay, this is gonna be easier. Two millimeters, perfect. Nah, we should go a little bit more than that. We only want to cut that. Yeah, some good clearance in there. So two and a half millimeters. So we're gonna extrude these other parts. Extrude negative five only. Oh, it did it. Okay, good. So only cut that. Come around to the other side. So let's get rid of the analysis. Come on. Like that. Like that. No. Come on. Try the screen. Case front's what I want to see. All right. So that's how that's looking. We got some cleanup to do. That's okay. Strewed. No, I don't. Why did it move? What moved? I must have accidentally dragged something. Strewed. Wait a minute. What did I move? It's okay. Doesn't matter. Negative 2.5. That one's easy. Shane is live? Well, then I'm going to cut this done. I'm going to go done on this pretty soon. Because I do not want to overlap with Shane. So, um, you kind of just. Thanks for watching, guys. You kind of get the idea of what I'm trying to do here. We'll do another one of these shortly. But uh, go watch Shane's stream. He's more important than I am. Besides, honestly, I wouldn't be doing this for, for him anyway. So, cool. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to cut it short. Go watch Shane's stream. I'm heading over there, too.